food and then meet a couple of friends, possibly it's the first day in six months when I have this, uh, it's, it's a wonderful day. So thank you very much for inviting me here. I think with somebody like Mr. Gobala Allah, I'm not paying back compliments. You don't need anybody else to advise you. I think he's been the most outstanding civil servant that India has seen. So that was that. But the meanwhile, I had done enough mischief. We can bond the mischief. In three days' time, we had uh, chance treated, uh, I think, approximately about 6,000 vehicles. We collected a fine of 35 lakhs, including from the six ministers of the Kerala government when I was a transport commissioner. What happened after that was dramatic. Over the next two weeks, the rate of accident in Kerala came down to 60% after this. What we did was very simple. We said, I take my entire uh, motor vehicles department officials to one particular district and we check every road, by lanes, right up to the okay. morning till midnight, mind you, I'm there on the road. I'm, see, I don't just write files in my office and uh, I'm there on the road right from morning till night. And that's when we saw people flouting roads left, right and center. Very large number of people not having the basic records like third, even third party insurance. So what happens if there's an accident? The person doesn't get anything, not only that he dies or gets maimed, he doesn't get anything at all because the person who caused the accident possibly doesn't have the means to pay. So it's, it's tragic. So we have huge problem with the law enforcement in the motor vehicles department. I think fundamental problem is when we get onto those wheels, we turn lunatics. We forget our own safety, we forget the safety of the other people. <clears throat> I'm very lucky to be alive today because when I was an MLA, I was I didn't have a driver. Possibly I was the only MLA in the country without a driver. Um, I was traveling from Chavarum to Kuchin one day and uh, near Kuchin uh, on the four lane traffic, I was overtaking a bus and suddenly the bus swerved to the right. I had no place to go, so my vehicle went over the median turtle and then went off to the other side turtle three more times and my vehicle went, went off the other direction. Peak traffic 11.30, my vehicle broke up into pieces, went to the shoulder, broke up into pieces. Now this is where God is at work, not even a scratch on me. I should have been into a hundred pieces and not even a scratch, absolutely. So it's very uh, biblical because the Bible says not a hair on your body will be lost without his knowledge. So, but can we leave less things to God? Poor man, let's not bother him too much. Yeah. How much, how much work can we leave into God? Can we, can we take the responsibility when we are on wheels? Our roads need to be better. Because with this kind of roads, if you expect people to travel from abroad to come in here, they won't. Like I'm trying to promote tourism in a big way in the Northeast. I mean, Mr. Gopalakshan Allah was in charge of the Northeast. How do I invite a tourist to Northeast if your roads are the way I describe? How will they go? Will I take them? No, just to get into Shulok. So we need to make our roads better. This government has done dramatically well after coming to power. The Prime Minister said, we want a modern country with modern infrastructure. When this government came to power in 2014, the average number of kilometers that was highway that was being built was 4 kilometers. Today it is 24 kilometers. So number one, the road infrastructure is being built. But is that enough? I think we need to take this forward a lot more. Number two, I think the biggest problem is with the state governments. Only national highways come under the Ministry of Transport, the others come under the state governments. This is where I think not enough money is being set apart for creation of infrastructure in the state. And number three, in a lot of states, I don't want to name them, the money doesn't reach the road at all. So we have a problem of corruption. So we need to have really roads built to standards. I think this is very, very important. And of course, third is the important thing of we. Is it just a taxi driver who are unruly? Very often what I notice, it is a guy with a swanky car who is the most unruly on the road. So don't blame the poor taxi drivers. How? God, it's crazy. It just drives you mad the way people how? Why are they doing it? 
Words of respect for the other. I think all this ultimately comes down to a lack of respect for the other. I go jogging every day, I don't have any cops. Uh, so people keep on, what is your cop for? What for? Yeah. Who wants to kill ever? So can we have more sanity by each of us? Make <laughs> behaving better on the road. Starting with us, the big people, right? Under the people right there. Yes, we have programs to train taxi drivers in the two. I think over the next one year, we could possibly train all the taxi drivers of this country. So I think if you take the initiative, we will be out with you. I think you could possibly start doing that. It's an extremely important sector. And also, people behave themselves. I think they need training. Taxi drivers need training. Auto rickshaw drivers need training. Not to loot the people, number one, to have a fare which is fixed and not depending on the number of the face of the person who, who is a, a passenger. I think these things should be very, very um, uh, strictly regulated. Problem is, if you are going to, if you are willing to cheat, where do you stop? Can cops catch every taxi driver who is out there to cheat? I think these are things which we need to change. Yesterday I received a mail uh, from a tourist who came to India. I don't want to say more about it because I was in the media all of the tomorrow headlines, unfortunately. It, I was in tears after reading that. I won't tell you the reasons because it's a, it's a very, 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 very uh, touchy issue. Yeah. And therefore I don't want to describe. It's something made in me. Is it? Is this what our country is about? How many of us learn to smile? I mean, there's a huge, massive problem Indians have. We don't smile at all. We all think we are so important. We sit with our muscles, holding it like this. You know how much energy is wasted when you sit like that with your muscles all tight and up? If you relax, so much energy is released, actually, you know? So I think we need to be, since I'm talking from this tourism point of view, learn to be more friendly. The other day when I landed in Thailand, oh my God, the kind of courtesy, the kind of uh, hospitality which oozes from every cell of a Thai there, it's, a, it's in the DNA. Tourism is in the DNA. Now, is, in the, is tourism in the DNA of Indians? I'm asking questions because if I don't give the reply, which will again be headlines tomorrow. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Sometimes you want to speak up on issues which are, which are extremely important for the country where we all need to stand together. Well, we need to support the government, support the vulnerable Prime Minister because he's trying to convert the country into a very modern country. See, there are people who are trying to obstruct that. I think we need to, as a minister, it's my responsibility to come out with also my arguments regarding my departments, my ministry, where I think people, things are, sometimes things are unreasonable, where citizens need to cooperate. I think we all need to work on a whole lot of things together. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's a great work which has been done by this institute and I'm so happy that on a holiday, so, so many of you have come here and on time, surprising, yes, and, and on time. I have this terrible habit of being before time all the time, yeah. In 40 years, I think I never been late even for a function and I hope I keep to that reputation. That's uh, nice to be on time, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, uh, everybody was here when I came and it's uh, amazing. So thank you very much. Let's work these things up. And as she said, we have not even uh, harvested the tip of the iceberg as far as tourism is concerned. We just get, but happily we just cross a 10 million mark. And uh, we contribute about 6.88% of the GDP. That's our contribution to the economy. And um, we are doing very well. In fact, last year, the foreign tourism flow into the country increased by 15.6%, while the global tourism increased only by 7%, we did dramatically well. We employ a very large number of people. I don't want to tell you the numbers because I won't make, I think the Prime Minister's office will make a revelation regarding how many people are being employed by the tourism ministry. It's a dramatically high number of people. It's got the biggest multiplied effect in the investment in the tourism industry. And uh, this is the easiest way to create uh, not only just employment at all, at the highest levels, at the lowest levels, from illiterate people to semi literates to graduates to post graduates, everybody gets employed in my in my uh, in this hospitality industry. So it's an amazing place which brings in equity, good distribution of wealth. Or like the honorable prime minister says, we need to really, not just grow. We also need to reach the fruit of development to the last man out there. So I think an amazing thing. Our objective is simple. 
we want to double the tourism flow in three years. I want to, I want to double my receipts in three years. All this is possible. I think if, if you have seen my new promotional on yoga, has anybody seen it? How come? In 10 days, you know how many views we had, not hits. Hits were 40, 46 million hits were there. You know how many people have viewed my 60 second promotion on yoga? 22 million people. Now that's a government at work. You think only Samsung and Apple and Ludia will get to the ocean? <laughs> I beat you guys straight away. Have you have, ever had an ad which, which had 22 million views in uh, 10 days? Over in 100 days? No, I can bet you, I can challenge you. We beat you guys. This government is professional. You know how many hours hours I spent on this 30, 60 second uh, promotional? I spent 10 hours. And then we got 22 million views. I think you must see, it's uh, named Yogi of the Racetrack. So have a look at it, Yogi of the Racetrack. It's a completely new way of looking at, uh, at uh, yoga. And not only that, this is to me Indian civilization crystallized because we all keep talking about this 5,000 year old civilization. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me on this wonderful day, holy day. So thank you very much and I'm deeply honored to be sharing the stage with the people like Mr. Pilla. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. It's an honor for us, for you to be here amongst us. Your words of encouragement. Thank you very much.